All right. So this is my first time buying a locomotive straight from Scale Trains, and this was their holiday special, um, where they had so much off a locomotive. This and then another BNSF locomotive both um, complied with what they were looking for for their sale. Um, so it was an extra fifty dollars off, I think, on top of the sale price for the for this and the BNSF specific road number. So here's what I purchased at number ninety five fifty five. So we're going to go ahead and take a look, open it up. Just gently cut the tape. Call me old-fashioned, but I try not to cut up the box. So one thing you notice about scale trains that a lot of manufacturers don't do is they put a ton of info on the back. So here's the locomotive. Here's all the information about it. Um, and then just... A bunch of information about scale trains rivet counter and then just scale trains innovative uh, products so it's kind of nice there's a little bit more info here than you would find on the back of a regular manufacturer's box I'm gonna go ahead and crack this baby open of course we've got your manual here got all your information Put that right back in the cover right away, remove the foam, and there it is. A moment I've been waiting for for about four days since I ordered it on Sunday. <laughs> so we're going to remove this. Um, I've been taking this stuff out and pitching it basically. I don't really plan on shipping this again. Uh, if I do, it's probably not going to be too far, so I've been throwing out the white foam. It just gets to be too messy for me. With that aside, we've got our extra bearing caps. Typical packaging for scale trains and many manufacturers these days. And underneath we see a brand new locomotive here. So I can already see a couple little cosmetic blemishes that will all be taken care of. Uh, with some weathering, but overall it's a very nicely detailed locomotive. I can see some blemish here that might just get rubbed out um, And it's not there's actually a couple of dots here in the paint So let's pull it out and poke and prod our way around first thing we're gonna do is remove these truck protectors Because all too many times I have forgotten these on here, and then it's tipped over. Thankfully. I've never noticed any damage But why take a chance? We know we can stop that. Just back in the clear cover right away. I'll probably keep this guy out until I program him, test him out a little bit. Uh, something I just noticed is this thing is a little loose in here. It can move around. Um, not typical of scale trains, they're usually pretty tight. And actually, when I pulled it out, it was kind of like this with the inner sleeve. Kind of sliding around um, that could potentially lead to some damage of the locomotive but we'll see when we go around <clears throat> so I don't know if you guys can see it here but there's a little blemish right here there's a dot in the roof uh, and some blemish in the paint otherwise the roof looks pretty good horns are a little bent down out of shape uh, I don't think I'm gonna bother with that too much your window deflect wind deflector is broken um, it's not it's sitting at an angle it's not on quite right um, it does appear to be loose. Uh, it's not actually affixed in the proper location at all. It's just loosely hanging on there. Uh, going around to the front here. I don't know if these little things underneath the ditch lights are supposed to be here. I've never noticed that in another locomotive, but I could very well be wrong. Um, just some uh, gunk on the glass there. I noticed that this uh, grab iron right here on the steps is chipped. Get some of this foam out of here. Always afraid of breaking the handrails trying to get that stuff out. <clears throat> Don't want to blow that window out though. That window's not attached at all. So 
sometimes you gotta kind of lift the foam over the louvers and so we've got the blemish here we've got that thing just completely falling off <clears throat> um we've got the chip on there just a little bit of fuzz over here So it might be for my breath. Oh, actually, no, those are tinted windows. That's why. Just made sense to me. All right, so this has got tinted windows on here. Um, so this deflector is out, or the mirror, whatever that is. I'm gonna guess. I'm assuming this is the mirror here at the armrest. Um, that deflector is on good. You can actually see the grate right there, or uh, that grill is actually at an angle right there. Other than that, I don't see any major issues. Um, there's some gunk on the air tank here. Uh, probably something got scratched and they painted over it. Overall, um, not horrible. A lot of things can be fixed and uh, touched up in weathering and whatnot. Uh, it's kind of a shame that it's you know a little beat up. Everyone expects a perfect model, but it's not a perfect world. It's probably never going to happen. Um, one thing or another is going to be wrong with the locomotive but i see these same marker these same uh things underneath the uh, ditch lights in the back so i'm going to assume that's normal i see a bubble in this lens here uh at this point i'm just basically being a dick there's another chip in the paint on here I'm guessing whatever this is on the fuel tank is supposed to be there. I'm guessing it's a weld. Since it follows a line underneath here, I'm going to assume that's correct. I'm not a prototype guy. I don't know what is and isn't supposed to be on here. Um, I bought it mostly because it was a good deal. It matches some of my other Norfolk Southern equipment. And I think it'll look really good weathered up. So with that, let's throw it on the track, get it tested, and see how it does. So the first thing I want to bring your attention to is now that we've got this down on track level is that we've got this sanding line here is way below track level. So it's something that can be easily fixed. I'll probably in all likeliness just nip it off. Um, but before we go too much further, I'll actually just take it and try to push it back up, see if it's just hung up on something. Um, odds are it's something very fixable. So another thing I just noticed is this coupler is a little all bent up actually on both ends if I lower this here da -da -da, you can probably see that that coupler is bent up same with this side so that could be an issue um, it could be a tight body um, on the chassis could be a number of things it's just kind of um, one of those things that's probably going to be annoying at some point. It's going to help cars pop out from underneath it who might have a loose coupler. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to pause the video here yet again, and I'm going to try to fix that hose before we test this thing. All right, after further inspection, it would appear that there were details applied after that brake line or that um, sanding line was that is not permitting me to put it back where it should be according to the opposite side of the locomotive. So it was installed incorrectly, another detail was applied, and I would have to break that detail off. It's another line underneath to actually allow me to get it back in. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm probably just going to end up cutting it off because I don't see them anyways. And on my SD40-2s, they're always making noise going around corners, and so I'll probably just just tear it apart. So let's just get this thing fired up here.
All right, so she's fired up, <clears throat> hopefully ready to go. Try to get some headlights here. Okay, so apparently the headlight is under number five. That is the bell. So the ditch lights don't want to come on. <clears throat> so what's actually going on here is I have the locomotive in forward. I'm going to take this thing off the stand here so I can show you exactly what's happening. Here is my NCE throttle. I have locomotive number three in forward with the ditch lights on. Okay, you can see there is nothing on. So if you come around to the back, the rear headlight is on. Okay. Now if I put this in reverse, that's off, and the front headlight is on. So the decoder is in reverse. Not to mention that's operating as number five. So now the headlight's still on, I have the headlight off on here. So the wiring in this thing is all goofed up. And I've yet to be able to get the ditch lights to work. So now we got a wiring mess. This is something that might take some serious time to program out of this locomotive. So what I'm going to do is wait till mo uh, next week, Monday, I'm going to call scale trains and find out uh, if this is a problem they expected, if this is why it was on sale, uh, if it was a bad run. Otherwise, I might uh, find out for some tech support or if they'd be willing to exchange. Stay tuned, and we'll be in touch soon.